Welcome to Tell Me Your Story, New Paradigms for a New World, where we're giving you choices and knowledge of those choices to help make your dreams come true. Sundays at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., Mondays at 1 a.m., Wednesdays at 9 a.m. for our special edition of Tell Me Your Story, and then Monday through Friday from 8 to 9 a.m., that's nine programs, nine conversations, nine different guests, and we certainly hope that you can tune into one, hopefully all of them. If uh, And you can tune in at those times, by the way, by going to uh, richarddugan.com and clicking on the Listen Live uh, link that's right there at the top on the right-hand side. We also podcast our programs on SoundCloud, iTunes, TuneIn Radio, Spotify. We are also on YouTube where you can watch these conversations. I hope you'll subscribe. And then, of course, uh, select notification so that uh, when I do post a new conversation, I did say I post. I'm a one-man band, ladies and gentlemen, making hopefully some halfway decent music. And um, we hope that you will uh, listen in. Uh, to some of that music that we play uh, during these programs. And that's metaphorically speaking, folks. Uh, we uh, we certainly uh, want uh, to hit the right notes and so forth. We talk about that all the time, sound and vibration and, and frequency, and probably get into a little bit of that in our conversation today. We um, also ask that if you would like to be a part of what we're doing and you can help us out financially, we would be grateful for that support and that help, we have a PayPal account. It is there for your security as well as ours. And uh, when they ask to whom are you sending the uh, support to, the financial uh, uh, wherewithal, put in the email address richard at richarddugan.com. And then take some time during this decade of perfect vision, uh, the 2020s, to go within and listen to that still small voice. And with all that being said, we are re we are being joined once again by um, a guest we've had on before, and I know we'll have her on several times. I am sure here on the, the program, she is uh, the author of several books that we're going to talk about: "Gliding You Home: How to uh, Move from a Force State." Uh, this is her first book into a flow state second book uh, in that respect and also um how you can have high performance without pain a best-selling book as well uh daniela bowman is our guest and uh, daniela thank you so much for coming back uh, to the program and uh, being with us here on tell me your story thank you so much richard it's a pleasure as always to uh dialogue with you and your audience. Pleasure to be here. We are going to talk today, um, among other things, we're going to talk about a special event you have coming up. It is a retreat, uh, and it uh, focuses on how you can experience authentic whole life success and fulfillment. So if you're ready to become the uh, captain of your own ship, which by the way, there's a subject we'll get into, I'm sure. Uh, be the captain of your own ship and um, expand your reach and level of influence. Now, this uh, this will um, show you exactly how to do that. And uh, let's talk a little bit, first of all, about this retreat, that, uh, that aspect of it. Um, we will have a link uh, to it uh, on the website, on the uh, SoundCloud page and so forth. For folks to find out more but uh, tell us about this retreat when it's happening where it's happening uh, how they can participate uh, uh, in in this uh, this special event yes thank you richard um so the retreat is called dolphin harmony meditation and inner peace alignment retreat and it's happening on september the 21st in riverside california from 10 to 1 p.m. I was going to say a.m. to 1 p.m. <laughs> and um, the retreat is all about, uh, you know, how we are all on that treadmill at times of corporate America. And we're just on that treadmill. And sometimes it seems like we're more running than taking intentional action. Well, this is a great way to kind of step 
off that treadmill to really refocus and recharge and rebalance together with meditating with the, with the wonderful sounds of the uh, of the dolphins we're going to have dr gramlin talk about statistics of the power of meditation and how it reduces anxiety and pain physical pain also and we're going to also have dolphin-inspired movements, simple sequences that can be done by anyone. Even if you are not able to get up much, you can do some of them even in sitting. Because the dolphins are very inclusive, Richard. They really include everyone. Uh, you don't have to be in top physical shape to do uh, to do movement. So I hope as many people as possible are able to join us to get uh, some peace and wonderful transformational new meditation techniques I've been given and to just have community, build community and have wonderful healthy snacks and food. I'm so excited uh, about this retreat. So thank you. Well, I'll tell you, these, these retreats um, that, that folks offer, I know that obviously before the uh, the pandemic pandemic in 2020 uh obviously we were always meeting in person and then the retreats at first they went away and then people discovered oh you know what i could do this online uh, the online is still working yeah <laughs> fairly well and uh maybe we can do it that way you know that type of thing uh so i think that it's exciting that we're we're starting to make that shift. We're starting to realize that this whole uh, aspect of uh, the pandemic and and uh, social distancing and all of the different aspects therein, I don't want to say has has uh, shifted away from that. Don't you know? It's still important to take care of yourself, just as if we're dealing with uh, the influenza, the the you know the flu virus, that kind of thing. Uh, but I think that I think that we can still move forward, raise our consciousness, uh, raise our vibration, if you will, and so on and so forth, to make this a better place. And in that in that light of frequency and vibration, I'm sure you're familiar with some of the healing modalities that take that into consideration. One of the first that I became aware of many many years ago, it has to be thirty thirty five, maybe forty years ago was by a gentleman by the name of Royal Raymond Reif, who had the, the uh, Reif frequency generator. And it basically generated a frequency that was balancing to those imbalanced frequencies in our bodies. And what yeah. you're doing on, in, in a different modality, in a different way, is kind of doing that, isn't it? Yeah, Exactly. You just knit, hit the, the nail on the head. That's exactly what we're doing. And so what I was being told that this was really, because I didn't really plan on doing this retreat. It's kind of like always, it kind of comes through and says, this is what we're doing now. <laughs> so, <laughs> following orders. Don't but you love I, that? I love that. But fortunately, I'm, I'm being given the enthusiasm and most of the time the energy to do all these things. But it really is the, the key words I was given was peace. And then the other word I was given alignment. And so with what you're just saying right now, of course, all my work within all my books, even with speaking engagements within my coaching work, it always has to do with create it with recalibration, Richard, and creating an alignment. And so it, this retreat is going to be really a great way of folks to be able to step in to these modalities. And whether they they are brand new to it, or like you, you've heard about uh, healing frequencies to rebalance the system, mm -hmm. uh, or or whether they are seasoned at it, because it this there are new frequencies that are be, being now brought up onto the planet for all of us to up level into. So that's why the I'm being told it doesn't matter whether anyone has experience or not, because the frequencies that are being brought forth now, especially at a retreat, creates this funnel for folks to be able to step into. 
and to feel a sense of ease mm. in the pressure cooker that we're often feeling that we're in politically or otherwise on this world stage. You know, uh, and, and I'm glad you brought that up, not the political part, which we certainly could talk about, but I'm not going there right now, is, is the fact that the stuff that we're dealing with and, and um, well, I'm going, I'm going to put this out there uh, by, first of all, um, asking the question of you, the listener, I want you to raise your hand. All right. Here in the studio, uh, anybody that's in the studio with me, raise your hand if you are currently in some form of therapy, okay? I was in uh, my counseling session the other day and uh, the, the counselor asked me, uh, so, so uh, you know, with the, the things that I had been sharing with him that seemed like th th this particular element had come, had come to a conclusion. He says, so do you feel a, a little less... Uh, 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 pressure, you know, like, uh, you, you know, one of these items is now off the list, uh, uh, you know, that kind of thing and, and, and what have you. And of course, invariably what tends to happen in this world is one thing goes off the list and then something else comes back on the list, you know, that kind of thing. Well, in this case, this particular item that, that I had been sharing, I said, uh, yeah. And actually this one item has actually, eased my mind about two or three or four other items on that list of things that that seem like they they're overwhelming they're they're you know uh, it's like uh, i you know so when is the next shoe gonna drop you know that kind of thing do you find that um that is one of the issues that a lot of people have is that they cannot seem to get rid of some of these items on the list for whatever the reason, it, you know, they're, they're, they're not able to, and I don't know if the correct word here in your context is they're not able to de-stress their lives because they can't seem to get rid of any of these items on their list, not even, not even in a little way where a little bit of the pressure, if not all of it on one item, they just, you know, they can't seem to either it won't go away or it went away, but they haven't let go of it yet. Yes. I think that's something that many folks, uh, you know, experience and, you know, I've certainly experienced on and off as well. However, I think, the, again, even there, we are between paradigms. And as a human, we are asked to grow and transcend and rise above. And some of the old ways of how we dealt with uh, issues or items on our emotional or psycho-spiritual list or material life, it, it, it doesn't no longer work in the same way to solve them the same way. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. oftentimes with everything happening, it's... It's not that we can really or ought to get rid of these things, ex except accept them as part of the journey. You know, so I think when we move more into a place of befriending something, you know, mm -hmm. it does not become the enemy because the enemy is something we want to get rid of. Right. Except like you're saying, it may be replaced by, in quotation, enemy. I'm using this as an umbrella term mm -hmm. or, or a political situation or something historical or, you know, a family member or and it's just all part of the shuffling through. Right. Mm -hmm. Except. Just like when you're trying to, in the olden days with the rages, we're trying to find that channel. We go back all the time. So when we befriend it, it just, it, it disarms the power that some of these things have on us. Mm. You know, so it's, that, that's one thing, Richard, I, I'd like to add one more. Please thing. go, please go ahead. Um, and the other one is the two words and is energy management, your own personal energy management and what that ends up empowering you, you to do is to redirect your focus 
deliberately. So you direct your attention and your focus to where it is desired to go versus being lived by default by external circumstances Mm -hmm. or by historical things, historical meaning within our own life history, or the parents always did, mom or grandma, right? Mm -hmm. So when you learn to, to... Work on your own energy management, um, how you how you navigate through life mentally, emotionally, physically, your own mindful awareness of who you are and what and setting boundaries, healthy boundaries accordingly. Mm-hmm. It then empowers you to pivot. And it's all about pivoting at this stage again the old way no it just no longer works we still go there Mm -hmm. there too but the old way no longer works so now it's really more and more about stepping into and shifting our attention and focus into what does what feels better what's easier who who, to do uh, programs or collaborations with with people that resonate you know that ties right into one of our one of our own slogans here uh, about uh, we're looking for those new ways of living because the old ways don't work. Just look around you; they're not working. Uh, the religious, the economic, the political, the education—you can go down the list. They're not working, and specifically because we do have to keep it focused here. Right here, they're not working. So what if, you know, what are they doing elsewhere? Doesn't matter. What are we doing here to make things better? And and uh, I often think about these these aspects of, uh, you know, uh, 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 the, the name calling in these different arenas. And I'm going, how is that helping the situation? How is it making things better with you calling them names and them calling you names? Well, they started it. What are you, children? You know, well, if they don't, if they'll stop, we'll stop. No, no, no. It starts with you. If you stop, then it stops because you're not putting it out there. And I I just, I I couldn't agree with you more in terms of, as, as we phrase it, of course, looking for those new ways of living. They're out there, but we're not willing uh, as a, 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 as a country, sometimes um, the arrogance of some countries, uh, to think that uh, they have all of the answers. And unfortunately, the America, uh, the United States is one of those that is so arrogant that it thinks that it has all the answers because it wants to wants to be, wants to be the greatest country in the world. Somebody has to be two, three, four, five, six down the list. Why is there shame in not being number one? Why can't we be collectively working together to solve the problems instead of trying to outdo one another? Is that, is that, let me put it to you. Is that too much to ask Daniela? <laughs> no, I, I can feel your passion uh, sharing about that. And, and again, of course, this goes back into collaboration into teamwork, into Mm -hmm. unity, into, you know, how can we find consensus, Mm -hmm. right? Can we find consensus? And so it does certainly always start at home. But that home starts not just with the home, but the home within yourself. So when you refocus to what is what does the show look like inside of me? How do I find a, a peaceful alignment, right? And is it about who is right or who is wrong? Or is it about the love of power versus the power of love? Mm. And so... I'm currently working within a situation where I'm helping a family with a family member at, that is nearing an end stage of her life. Mm. And 
people have different opinions, different feelings. And so things are coming up from the past and this, that, and the other. And you, if you want to use this as an example, of course, the focus is on each person, but it's not on the greater whole, which really ultimately is the other person that is actually needing the advocacy that's going through the process. So again, this goes back to being able to focus and refocus on what's the essential thing here. Mm -hmm. And even if we may not always agree what that is, Richard, the overarching theme, what does this person going through this aging and and, and nearing the, the death process, um, what does she need at this point? So finding, again, consensus in a way that demonstrates inclusivity and that demonstrates compassion and that is willing and able to pardon error mm. you know um there are situations that have developed over the years in my lifetime um one in particular that comes to mind as you have talked about this where if i had the wherewithal um when this whole business um in the uh, in the Eastern Bloc countries um, where uh, Ukraine was invaded, um, I made the comment. I said, if I had the wherewithal, I would jump on a plane and fly to Moscow and um, basically blow past all of the uh, guards and all of that kind of stuff at the Kremlin and grab that little nutball by the ear and say, your mother is ashamed of you. We do not play like this in the 21st century. You are going on timeout, permanent timeout. We're not going to kill you. No, absolutely not. That, that's, that's counter to my own personal uh, beliefs. But you don't get to play anymore. You're done playing. Okay. Uh, it's, it's now, it's, it's now serious time, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yes. because this is not the way that we solve things. And, you know, you want to reconstitute, uh, whatever you think, uh, needs to be reconstituted. Uh, and the reality is that p human beings have the right to self-determination regardless of, of where they're at. Now, if you want to live under this particular uh, form of existence, you go right ahead and we'll put you on an island and you can run the show. You can do whatever you want, but you're not going to tell anybody else how they're going to live. The problem is, is that we have a lot of those kinds of people all over the world and I know I'm I'm pretty sure that there are a lot of little tiny islands all over the planet. We could put most of these people on and say, have <laughs> at it. Let's see you subjugate uh the animals and the plants on this on this little island here. It's all yours. We'll there'll be no traffic coming in. All right. You're on your own. Uh you go right ahead and and have at it. The rest of us, we're gonna try to work together, to play together, to live together, to love together. What are some of the things that you have discovered that we can learn from uh, in beginning this process, <laughs> not of going around and and uh, getting hold of these guys by the uh, guys and gals by the ears and and saying We're, you're done, but how we can maybe do that to ourselves <laughs> because sometimes we have let someone else, maybe not physically in the now, but up here in the head, in the heart, in the mind, in the psych psyche, we have allowed someone else who has, I was bullied as a kid in school. Mm -hmm. So are those bullies still running my show or am I? How do we go about that process of saying, I'm not letting you live up here rent free anymore? Well, that's a it's a very rich process, and ultimately, that is where it all starts, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, in and that really is in school, you know. So if we're looking at that on a very personal level, which of course that's what we all first are mm -hmm. is a person. So you know, when I was a little girl, 
I was I was a little girl, you know, petite little girl. And so I remember I was bullied by this boy. I still remember his name. Um, five, six years old. And then in the kindergarten, there were some things happening as well. Uh, but I was always a, quite energetic um, and so and high energy. So I think it was in third grade um, where, and I did not realize this until later on in my coaching work, and I use it as a coaching example in terms of that bullying and our allowing external circumstances to to uh, dictate over us right where ultimately mm -hmm. really is from within but it often does start with that decision and sometimes there really do have to be those things that push us right mm -hmm. so, um after having been bullied on the way to school and then one time i was pushed off in the winter time, pushed off a stair and I split my tongue and I had to be ran to the doctor. And then I was maybe in 10 or 11 now. And in, in Switzerland back then, Richard, um, when you were on a break, there weren't at the time, at least there weren't a whole variety of teachers out there watching everything that was going on. Right. So mm -hmm. it wasn't uncommon that the boys in their mischief would, would mischief would run after the girls. Right. And they're kind of try to pull up their skirts and things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And it's what kind of just what kids do sometimes. It just is sure. what it was. Mm -hmm. But that said, at that time, I must have made a decision because this this boy um, ran after me and again, tried to lift up my skirt. And I turned around. I held him by the collar. And I looked at him straight in the eye and I said his name. And then I said, if you do this again, I'm going to beat you up. <laughs> and I was always quite, like I said, high energy. And I could be as much as I'm very playful, I could be quite resolute. And that boy looked at me like, Ooh, oops. And he, he, there was no doubt in his mind that that wasn't going to be the truth. Because like I said, I was little, but I always had a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. so giving him a little bit of a beating. But the point that, I, that we're making here in terms of what you started, that was when I started. And all of you that are listening, when did you make the decision to dig to determine what's happening in your inner world and what influences you are allowing to come in versus learning then to redirect them? We can't always control everything, but mm -hmm. we can redirect. Now, the consequence of that was that um, I ended up earning a nickname, and that nickname was... Uh, Pee-pee lung stocking, I think, you know. I'm you're familiar. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, and not just that, I also earned the respect of the boys. Uh -huh. You know, so they ended up calling me by my last name. Well, the Boomin said. Mm -hmm. you know? So because I, I mean, I was very happily, you know, playing with everyone. I was a easy, easy getting along kind of kid. But it was like, dude, homie, don't play that. Don't do it. Just don't do it. <laughs> this is where I'm drawing the line. And so back to what you're just saying, being bullied. Sometimes people in their 60s are still going. I have folks in their 60s, I coach. They're still going through that process. Yeah. So when you as a listener and you and I, Richard, when we look at these life circumstances, where we're taking, we're, we're tuning in and we're going, how does this feel? Does it feel right for me or does it feel wrong to me? Mm. Start with that. It seems so simple. And yet we often just fail to do it. Yeah. One of my best friend uh, who has since passed, I knew him for 53 years on this planet. We went through grade school, high school and college together. Wow. And uh, uh, and I tell this story because I think it's real important to, for people to hear that when I think about him, even when I first heard about it, um, I I have not shed a tear for the uh, for the man since wow. I heard about him, because every time I think about him, I laugh. Yeah. 
because we had so much fun together. Uh, yeah. I miss him. Sure. I would love to call him and talk with him, hear his voice. Um, we did some uh, mock radio shows back in the in 1980. Uh, at a radio station I was working for, and I've 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 digitized those, and and uh, um, it's just fun to hear his voice. Anyway, um, um, he told me when when he was still here, uh, he he called. We we were chatting away. He says, "Hey, did you hear about so and so? Was one of the bullies?" He says, "I said no. What? He said, oh, he died." And I have to say that I did not take any joy in that. You know, it's like I was kind of sad in one sense. It's like, oh, no, how do you know? How, oh, I think it was like a heart attack or something like that. Oh, wow. I mean, this was back when I and of course, we were the, all the same age. This was right. back when I was in my 50s, mid late 50s, you know, and and I thought. Wow, I'm still here and he's not. And so now what's you know, what uh, what has what has come of that bullying? And I would have to say that that uh, on the one hand, I have learned how to uh, stand up for myself now uh, after, you know, and what's interesting is that I had an experience when I was 33. It's funny. Uh, there's a there's a line from uh, a Harry Chapin song where he's talking about uh, his life and so forth. And he says, um, and, now, uh, you know, I just turned 33 um, uh, the, the same age that Mozart uh, you know, died and Jesus was set free, that, that kind of thing, you know, and oh. rather poignant little mile, mile markers. And I had an experience when I was 33 at, that I used to define as um, from the movie City Slickers, where Mitch is talking to his his buddies as they're horseback riding. He said, what was your best day? What was your best day? And they would talk about it. So I started thinking about that, you know, and that it was uh, actually it was Labor Day, which, uh, as our conversation unfolds, is coming up. It's right around the corner. Mm -hmm. um, we were on a on a trip up, up north camping trip. And um, uh, I had an altercation with one of the guys up there and I stood my ground. And, uh, you know, and then, of course, he came up to try to guilt me because, you know, he was in the Vietnam War. And he says, and you, you know, you triggered my PTSD. And, that, and I was like, I don't care. I says, I'm not your son. You're not my father. You're not my professor. Knock it off. I know how to do the things that you seem to want to tell me how to do to do. And um, anyway, so we, we we worked it all out and everything was fine. But I used to refer to that as the day I, I became a man. And I was sharing it at the dinner table with my family. And my mother says, well, it's about time. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm I'm just wondering um, uh, along those lines in terms of growing up, in terms of recognizing that, okay, I've made it to this new milestone, to this new level, to this new plateau. Uh, I'm not letting the bullies, in this case, the bullies uh, run my run the show, uh, and though I don't have to be mean, I. I'm going to stand up for, you know, what I believe at this time. And I still remember that conversation with my elder sister, eldest sister, before her passing, we were talking at, uh, in, at Thanksgiving in the kitchen once. And I basically said, my beliefs of yesterday are not my beliefs of today are not my beliefs of tomorrow. Cause I'm still alive. I'm still growing. I'm learning and, and experiencing. So how, uh, you know, you've talked a little bit about this process you know, now one of the bullies is no longer here. Uh, I'm sure that the one gentleman I had the altercation with is probably not here. Uh, I don't know that because I, you know, this was back. Uh, well, I was 33, so that was uh, half a lifetime ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and um, I've had situations where I've had to do that in 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 my in the workplace. When you when you work with people, and I uh, first of all, you work with people one on one as well as in in group settings. Yes. So let's just do it on the one on one level. And someone comes into you who wants to get to that plateau to say, and again, we I think we need to make the, the distinction here when they say I want to run the show, but we're not talking egotistically. We're talking taking one's power back. Isn't that what we're kind of talking about? 
Uh, do you need for them to go through and rehash some of these things in order for them to figure out how to let them go? Or is, is that really irrelevant in the process? It's only relevant. That's a great question because I do uh Exact. I, that's one thing I sort of put out to my clients where we will only revisit your past to the extent where, you know, how it serves your future to where we sort of need to untie and not in order for that not to then dissolve and for the light of awareness to rise where you realize, oh, you know, and and then you can you can move on. But it. I think that's why I really, my particularly my one-on-one -on -one work, I really call it self-mastery work, self-leadership. So when somebody is wanting to go to that next level, which most of my folks uh, do, and currently I work with my share, with a share of um, business owners, entrepreneurs uh, that are very ambitious. And uh, oftentimes purpose-driven, not always, but oftentimes. Mm -hmm. So it, it all starts with the willingness, again, to become the captain of your own ship, tiny, large yacht, you know, <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. To be willing, Richard, to go, yeah, okay, if y'all want to do that, I got to be the captain of my own ship. I got to go stand in the front. And when you stand at the front, something you have to turn around and look at some things and go, well, this ought to be off. That needs to be off. This is no longer relevant in my life. Well, let's just throw this over or oh, this needs to be looked at. So it really is about self-leadership. The, the word and the work is self-leadership. And self-leadership in that way, it does require a certain degree of diligence and direction. Now I've seen with currently working with a with a new brand new business um, client that's very successful, very smart. It's not why clients come to see me, mm -hmm. but needing a very different evolutionary uh, or or inner growth um, and professional uh, process. And so when they start to lock on a on on the the way that the system works that this program works they end up realizing that they've left some core ingredients out and so you can't build a house solidly or or add another level to the house if your foundation is shaky and weak so to learn at its most basic, but at its most powerful level, Richard, to become present to what it is that you are experiencing in your life, mm -hmm. to show up for yourself. One of the questions I often um, ask my clients is, so who are you showing up for today? Who are you showing up for today? Hmm. Now, they don't know me yet. They're going to go, well, you know, the wife wants me to or, or the girlfriend or, well, my yeah. daughter, my <laughs> son, you know. Yeah. But when they know me a little better, they know that answer is not necessarily the one I'm looking for. And then they, you know, quite often now these days, folks really say, I'm here for myself. You know, I'm here for myself. And I said, that is a beautiful place to be absolutely beautiful place to be where true self-leadership and self-direction can go. How can we expect our country to be run if, if our inner, inner direction is so ex externally oriented? Yeah. So in self-mastery, again, going back into alignment, going back into a flow state versus force state, re reorienting again and again and again. And that reorientation, by the way, always happens in the present moment. It happens in the present moment. Where am I right now? Am I reorienting? Am I, does this feel in alignment? Yeah. From which then do we calibrate and take action, inspired action, and to trust that process? Yeah. Talk to us about that process and how important 
as I mentioned earlier in the program, going within and listening to that still small voice is. Yes. So that process starts with several general um, awarenesses, mm -hmm. but also very personal awarenesses about you allowing yourself to come forth and to take up space, to take up space mm -hmm. in this world and to, uh, to extend a greater level of unconditional love to yourself and mm -hmm. for who you are. This is really a very key ingredient, that process of coming home to yourself and and just kind of it's almost like you're here and there is your past self over here behind you and there's your future self ahead of you right and you're kind of starting to learn to step into that center richard and and you're able to start to balance more of all of these parts of you so you were the fight that is between your ego mind and your heart can start to be more amiable and it can start to be digested from a different level where there is not that much judgment, ultimately leading into much a much greater awareness of self-love mm -hmm. and allowing it's in my in my first book, High Performance Without Pain, a seven-step blueprint to reclaim your vibrant life and get even more done. There is a ha habit number three talks about acceptance and belonging. Oh wow. Oh wow. So the habit three, acceptance and belonging, is a very powerful habit. And I've spent a lot of time with many people that would have never thought they spent that much time in that habit to really understand what that is about and to whom they think they belong to. Mm. You know, you have, I believe, also in that book, <clears throat> the the seven mindfulness habits uh, that will empower. And um, I, I thought maybe we might, as we continue talking with uh, Daniela Booman about uh, the work that she is doing, as well as Dolphin. Did I get that? Dolphin Harmony? Did I get that right? Yes. The Dolphin retreat Harmony. that's, that's mm -hmm. coming up. There's a link. We encourage you to find out more about that as well online. But I want to talk to you about the, um, we'll call them the seven R's because that's what they are. <laughs> Uh, by the way, that was another thing, too, that I always found so disingenuous, you know, when especially when it came to school. Well, there there are the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. And I'm going, there aren't three R's there. Okay, there's an R in each of the words, but you're talking about the three R's because each word starts with an R. It doesn't. Writing starts with a W and arithmetic starts with an A. Give me a break. Could we have a little honesty here? But yours all start with an R. Uh, rewrite, recreate, reduce, realign, return, reclaim, and repair. And I'd like to maybe touch on those uh, uh, here as we as we continue talking here with our very special guest, uh, uh, Diane Booman here on Tell Me Your Story. So let's go through each one of these, if we can. And by the way, rewrite your high performance pain stories. Uh, someone said to me when it came to some challenges that I was going through in my life not long ago, they said to me this, Richard, it's your script. You can rewrite it if you want to and have a different outcome than what might come about if you continue down the road with the existing script. That's kind of what we're talking about, isn't it? Yes. So ultimately, it really is about someone's willingness, Richard, to be part of self-inquiry. And so I am always just so absolutely tickled purple pink. It's my favorite word. To, one of my favorite words to say. <laughs> but, you know, because we often make too much of all of this, you mm -hmm. know, by the, you know, by the, 
when we're born, you know, we're already on the way out. So let's enjoy the journey. Let's have mm. a little fun in the process. We often really make too much of it. But um, so what was your question? <laughs> um, the, the aspect of rewriting the oh, script. Yes. Yes. So what happens is oftentimes when a client comes in or someone I just talked to and I start to see that they're willing to start to go into deeper self-inquiry, it's endless. The possibilities are endless if you start to ask yourself some questions mm. and you really move into deeper self-inquiry. You can start. Re I've seen it within two, three sessions. Clients are rewriting their professional story. Things start to change. The way they write their proposals change because their alignment has changed, Richard. Mm -hmm. their, or their internal orientation is now in directing them to take mindful, intentional ac uh, action, right? Instead of automatic action. And of course, automaticity is not in the present. Automaticity is always in the future. It's on the treadmill. So rewriting the story is very powerful. And we all have some of the gremlins in the back some uh, yeah kind of like eh, I, don't know I, you. I mean we're all people none of us is perfect i have this joke none of us is perfect except the queen and she's my beautiful kitty and she genuinely thinks <laughs> and knows that she is perfect but that's neither here or there. That's my silly self. <laughs> but with that said, um, you know, the, the willingness to do self-inquiry and to go deeper. And when you really go in and you talk to your captain, you talk to your captain, your inner captain, you, he will, he or she is going to give you a different answer than perhaps the one you've been getting. It's just a matter of having courageous trust and embarking on that process, which is why when I work with clients, whether that's on Zoom internationally or in person in my, at my office in Redlands or, or, or at a retreat, I am excited when people show up for themselves. Because a lot of my work, uh, Richard, is about getting as many people onto the possibility boat as possible to help them to glide home and <laughs> into, their own, into their own beautiful self, just like the dolphins talk about in the book, gliding you home, mm -hmm. a dolphin stream of a new earth, unlocking your spiritual potential, a practical guide to evolving your consciousness for personal growth. And this is important, fulfillment. Because oftentimes success, sometimes it may be monetary, but emotionally you may be left out. So the future is about not compromising one or the other, but getting it all on the same page. Mm. Danielle Booman is my Daniela Booman is my guest here on Tell Me Your Story. We're talking about, of course, the Dolphin Harmony Retreat that's upcoming. What were the dates again, or the date again? The date is um, September the twenty first. Um, it is from ten a.m. to one p.m. in person. And when you register, you will see the location in Riverside. It's a beautiful location. And um, it is an immersive retreat. Uh, there is a, uh, the early bird deadline is on September the 1st. And it is vibrantlivingnow.org slash dolphin retreat. That's vibrantlivingnow.org slash dolphin retreat. Now, this particular conversation will be heard Unfortunately, on September 2nd, is there any way that anybody who's registering and mentions Tell Me Your Story can still get that early bird registration if they mention Tell Me Your Story? Yes. Okay. So you've got something special there. This is a, a Monday deadline. Okay. She's giving you an extra day. All right. To, uh, to register. I hope that you will participate in this. Uh, and, uh, you know, quite, I, I don't know. I know that Riverside is uh, probably about an hour away from where I live. 
And uh, so uh, wherever you are in California, especially, but there's still plenty of time you can register and then make plans yeah. because um, you're going to be sort of celebrating right around, I believe, the autumnal equinox, the transition yes. between summer and fall. I love I love this time of the year because uh, as we head into September from August, uh, what I consider the three months of summer, June, July, August, um, the shadows start to change. And when I was a kid growing up in Phoenix, uh, as we got into September and yeah, OK, no more summertime play. We got to go back to school. The shadows were in such an at a, such an angle that you knew the cooler weather was coming back when I was a little kid. We had cooler weather in Phoenix in September uh, and school was going to start and football season and we we're headed for the World Series. And then as a teenager, loved to go to our state fair in September and October, especially during the time of the playoffs in the World Series. There was just something for me about that. It was so exciting. So I love this time of the year uh, because we're we're transitioning into that phase. So I hope that you can uh, participate. One of the other elements here that we want to talk about, the the R's, is to recreate healthy boundaries between your work and life. I think I brought this up the last time we talked about how my father said to me, Richard, find a, something that you love doing because you're going to be doing it for a long time. And I've been very fortunate that I have. I, I love, I, it's like, no, it doesn't matter what's going on outside. Uh, when I get in here and I turn on Zoom or if they're in studio and we turn on the mics and we start going, I'm just, I'm in heaven. And that's great. I have a hard time sometimes, I think, making that kind of separation. In other words, having those healthy boundaries because it's so much a part of me. So it sounds to me like I could certainly use some advice in in how to Cre recreate healthy boundaries between work and life. Yes, and I think we are we're all in some ways are um, guilty of that. If I want to use that word, you know, mm -hmm. when you're passionate about what you do, and I I certainly don't have a shortage of that. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean it is it is wonderful however of course anything to the extreme is 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 really not serving us right. so uh, when we move more into mindful awareness and mindful presence and finding um, these boundaries between work and play and family and you know Ultimately, it comes back to being guided into a place of a being, stepping into your being self, where um, you are able to just let go of the external pulls mm -hmm. or even the stuff that you're you're that really in quotation turns you on, where you're able to just come fully back into the being place. And so that is very important that when you, I did one uh, meditation um, on uh, the Geek Leader podcast, and you folks can listen to it on my website, vibrantlivingnow.org. And the gentleman was a corporate, a corporate, um, middle-aged man um it, like i said the name of the podcast is the geek leader and he was asking me yeah but Daniela, how do you you know there's family and there's corporate work there's you know driving to the office there's all this how do you create that balance right and so i was talking to him about maybe doing a little mini meditation and whatnot and we ended up doing that because there's there's different ways of meditating and for each person can find their own way. Not all works for everyone. And then we did a short, I guided him through a short meditation. And as he came out of it, he's like, oh my gosh, I feel so much different, right? So it's really about stepping off the spiral. Mm. 
or allowing the spiral to wind down and then land in your feet. Mm -hmm. And then as it, it's landed in your feet, feeling that spiral even go into beautiful Mother Earth that I love so much. And then grounding that energy into feeling the arms becoming part of the tree and the mind feeling it becoming part of the heavens and the rest of the body fully grounding into being who you are and recharging that way. It's almost like you're plugging the outlet back in. Mm -hmm. And then from that place, again, to start to take as I like to call intentional or deliberate mindful action. And then it goes from hyperactivity to just action, mindful, inspired action. It carries a different energy, carries a different stream of consciousness. Hmm. That is that, that's that is wonderful. Now, there's something that kind of goes along with that in in terms of these these different these seven different uh, uh, mindfulness uh, elements, and that is um, at least from my perspective in terms of creating these healthy boundaries between work and and life. But sometimes setting work aside, life, you need to set aside. You need to create boundaries, healthy boundaries, uh, between the different aspects of your life. And here's the challenge for some. There are those in our lives who want our attention. Okay. Um, they want us to be there. When I'm speaking maybe of, of maybe children, maybe the partner, the spouse, who when you're home, they want you with them. And it's like, Okay, so how do I get through to this person that just because I want to go out there and do a few things and have a little different experience and, and, and what I'm referring to in my own life is the yard. I want to do this or that or the other thing out in the yard to, to clean it up, to beautify it, to do this, do that, do the other. And... The sense is that, oh, but you're not here with me. It's like, well, but if I'm here with you, I can't do these other things that A, might need to be done, B, that I really enjoy doing, and C, that we would both be able to enjoy and and uh, 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 take delight in once once it's done. So is there a particular tack, a particular way to approach these folks in our lives and say, Hey, this is now, this is not personal. This is no reflection on you. It's just what I need to do. Well, I think it's important to realize that, you know, you can't do the work for, for someone else. Right. So if someone um, has issue, if somebody, somebody, for example, tends to be a bit possessive, right. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that's just part of their personality. That's just part of, of who they are. So ultimately, you know, none of us can really create in another's reality, right? Mm -hmm. However, in, I think in a situation like this, it's always good to open up a different dialogue and ask questions such as, you know, this would be nice if we if we have the yard done and this, that, and the other, because, and of course, I do want to spend time with you too, because mm -hmm. you're the most important person in my life. However, how would you like to have me do this and still do that? Yeah. And that, and that could be a big challenge to say the very what, least. What is your suggestion? How would you mm. like to have this done? Sort what of, do you suggest? Now it, the ball is in your court, so to speak. <laughs> right? Which, 
would, I think, go to one of these other elements of the seven uh, to reduce your anxiety, depression, and exhaustion. Because dealing with individuals like that can be <laughs> can be exhausting. So it seems well, to me th th what you're suggesting is going to help with three of these elements yes. uh, of, of reducing the anxiety, depression, and uh, and exhaustion, repairing your challenging or challenging relationships or challenged relationships, and uh, recreating healthy boundaries between work and life. Yes. So ultimately, it should never be your needs ahead of mine or my needs ahead of yours. You know, you should not have to sacrifice that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But again, people pleasing really is a disease. And especially some of us that are that want to do good and that are doing good. It's more a matter, and that is to work in the seven habits of the book, mm -hmm. is to take a look at and see what is it that I am tolerating? Where mm -hmm. am I continually stepping over the limits? Where am I allowing him or her to push my buttons and then give in? Now, who yeah. is the boss yeah. of that? Who is the master at that? The person that allows it to happen or the person that pushes the button? Yeah. I would say the person that allows it to happen, and that would be me. Correct. Correct. So I have to make the decision. The final three here that we'll touch on before we wrap things up, uh, realign with your values and create congruency. Values I uh, that... I'm sure most people understand congruency, maybe not quite as much. So talk to us a little bit about realigning one's congruency. Sure. So congruency means, you know, you may have heard the term, you know, uh, for example, you really appreciate a certain person because what they say is what they mean and what they mean is what they say mm -hmm. because they are living their beliefs. They are living what they believe in personally and professionally, and certain values are being fulfilled. For some people, it may be teamwork, and for others, it's leadership. For third people, it's having peaceful relationships. They are feeling congruent. If, if for somebody, work-life balance is really important and they're not living it, obviously, and they're, they're nearing burnout, it is very apparent that it's not it's not congruent. It's not harmonized. So imagine congruence as having a a, a group of uh, singers like Boys to Men. I love those guys. <laughs> and but let's just say those those guys are are the different team players within your own internal team. But they're not aligned. So now try to play that tune. Mm -hmm. It's gonna go ooh ooh. ooh. <laughs> sound a little crazy. <laughs> there is no harmony. No There's harmony. There's no harmony. Mm -hmm. So it's it is the it is the task of all of us, Richard, um, to create internal congruence from the inside out. Mm -hmm. And and when we stop pointing the finger, we really recognizing that four fingers always turn back to us. Three fingers always turn back to us, then you will realize we're ultimately really in charge. Mm. And it's up to us, again, self-mastery, self-leadership, and then other leadership. Mm -hmm. When we talk about this issue of creating congruency, if we... Uh, and I was going to ask you, what are the signs? But actually, one of those signs is, <clears throat> going back to the previous one, anxiety, depression, and exhaustion. <laughs> so, Absolutely. So again, all of these seem to work together uh, collectively. Um, and then we talk about returning your clarity, focus, and optimism, and also reclaiming a sense of self-direction and flow. Those two, along with the other five, they all work together and they do. I have to say that that kind of goes to 
finding one's purpose, doesn't it? It does. It really does. And particularly when you realize that your life, your happiness is not determined by anyone else. It is, it is you or it is I that determines that. And the way I respond and the way I view things and to continually understand that nothing is fixed. Everything mm -hmm. is malleable. Everything can change and adapt and move. And so oftentimes when I work with folks, sometimes there can be a lot of rigidity. Well, I've always done it this way and this has worked in the past. And, and, and that's just no, <laughs> how's that working out for you now? Yeah. It's yeah. not. So the willingness to step out. So in parts to answering some of those questions really is to be willing to step onto a different wave, onto a different wave that will lead you into a more congruent or let's word, use the word fluid motion, awareness and action. We encourage folks to uh, go to her website, which is uh, uh, one that uh, I think will ha hold some, some meaning for you. A vibrant living now. Okay. Don't wait. It's now vibrant living now.org will be linked to that website. We also encourage you once again to sign up for the dolphin harmony retreat coming up on the 21st of September in Riverside. Well, you can find out more by going to uh, the link. We will uh, make you aware of just go to vibrant living now.org. And you will find uh, the information regarding the Dolphin Harmony Retreat and uh, uh, as well as the book, the other books that uh, you have written uh, and make available as well. High Performance Without Pain, as well as uh, Gliding You Home. We hope that you will uh, uh, check that out. It's a, a dolphin's dream of a new earth and unlocking your spiritual potential. It's a practical guide to evolving your consciousness for personal growth and fulfillment. And uh, Daniela Booman, I want to thank you so much for uh, being a part of the work that we are doing here uh, to find, as we said earlier in the program, those new ways of living. And uh, you're helping to uh, provide those. Uh, I think that the key, though, is that each of us has to find for ourselves those new ways of living for us as individuals and then the collective search and find for those new ways of living i do believe will manifest themselves right absolutely it is the one in the many richard and yeah. that is what we are we are the one and the many and the more you evolve your consciousness the more you will realize that the person next to you just is is your brother is your sister and is part of your own global family in one way or another. Well, I thank you so much for being a part of what we're doing here and for uh, sharing your, your information and your story. And um, we look forward to having you back again to continue this conversation because obviously there's, there's always more to add, always some new insights uh, to share. And uh, we hope that you will join us again to share some new insights with us as well. Thank you so much, Richard. It's always a pleasure speaking with you and your audience. And I would love to be back for some more adventurous dialogue. Maybe, I'll tell you what, maybe what we can do is uh, following the retreat after the 21st of uh, December, of uh, December, of September, 21st of December, uh, September, why do I keep saying that? Uh, September 21st, uh, we'll have you back to talk about some of the, some of the exciting things that happened uh, at that yeah. retreat. All right. That sounds really good. All right. We'll do that. Uh, I do. I'm going to ask you once again, those three final questions I ask all of my guests. But before I do, I thank you for listening to and watching. Tell me your story. New paradigms for a new world. We are giving you choices and knowledge of those choices to help make your dreams come true. Sundays at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Monday mornings at 1 a.m. Wednesdays at 9 a.m. for a special edition of Tell Me Your Story. And then Monday through Friday from 8 to 9 a.m., streaming live at those times at richarddugan.com. Podcasting on SoundCloud, iTunes, TuneIn Radio, Spotify, Stitcher. 
We're on YouTube where you can watch these conversations, and I hope you will. And then also, we ask that you give us a little support. We'll take energetic as well. If you can do that, we would be gratefully appreciative on a financial level. We have a PayPal account. It's there for your security as well as ours. When they ask you who to send the uh, money to, Richard at Richard Dugan is the email address you'll want to put in. That's Richard at Richard Dugan.com. We also ask that you take time during this decade of perfect vision to go within and listen to that still small voice. We now ask of those three final questions. Number one, who is Daniela Booman? Daniela Booman is a joyful spirit, ever evolving and infusing joy into all those she touches. What gets you up in the morning? Life, life itself. My purpose. Mm. And finally, what was your best day? My best day. There's so many of them. They all sometimes blend in <laughs> one into the next. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's, it is for some hard to, to pick just one because they've had so many. Uh, but I thank you for sharing with us here on the program. And I thank you for listening to and watching. Tell me your story, new paradigms for a new world, where we're giving you choices and knowledge of those choices to help make your dreams come true. And until our next broadcast podcast video cast, love to law, Jeanette, I'm still listening. Dad, continue to be happy. Smokey, I'll see you on the other side. To my dear friend Zorro, aho, aho. <laughs>